Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Nadich. I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Today, we are going to talk about very interesting topic, which is connected to not only our individual life, as well as our national interest and the societal interest. Students, we all believe that businesses or the individuals should make money. They should make money with their honest and hard work. However, whenever they make money, they should pay real taxes also. Because if they do not pay taxes, then the government does not have enough money for the social welfare. However, people like to uh, you know do something which can help them to save taxes. Sometimes they are making money through illegal means also. Okay? So, it is almost impossible to pay taxes on the illegal money like suppose if you make money through corruption. Okay? So, then how can you disclose to the income tax authorities that you have made 20 crore, 50 crore, 100 crore rupees because you do not have any justification. Taxes are only applicable when you are disclosing your money uh, making through the legitimate means. Okay? You are running a business, you are salaried person then only you can disclose and the government will take taxes. However, when you make money through illegal means, you always like to do something that how can I uh, convert this black money into white money. Okay? Because obviously, what will you do with that black money if it is lying in your houses or somewhere else? Because you want to use that money. So, when you transfer, when you convert that money from black to white, that is called money laundering. Okay. So, money laundering is a very uh, serious issue uh, for society, for country as well as for some financial institutions because most of the time money launderings are done through some sometimes it is happened through the illegal means, but finally the white money you know you choose any method like the Hawala method or any other method ultimately money will come through the banks. Okay. So, the white money will come through the banks. So, when you are working in a financial institution or a bank or any institution which is relate, which is uh, dealing with money, so then you should know about this law, money laundering laws and then who is stopping it, who is controlling it, who is enforcing this law, that is the enforcement directorate. So, right now we call them ED, okay. in uh, maybe newspaper nowadays you hear a lot about the ED that ED does that, ED does this, you know. So, in this lecture, first we will understand what is money laundering and second then we will see what are the powers, duties and the and, and you know the mechanism of enforcement directorate. So, prevention of money laundering act 2002, the PMLA prevention of money laundering seeks to combat money laundering in India and has the three main objectives. Okay to prevent and control money laundering, to uh, confiscate and seize the money op uh, property obtained from the laundered money and to deal with any other issue with money laundering in India. So, the ED job or the PMLA job is not just to control that people should not convert their black into white. If they are succeed to do that thing, they need to take action and ultimately people will buy some property or they will invest some in company because they will you know they will do something with that white money again okay because that's why they are converting they are laundering their black money to white money so that they can use it for their personal or businesses purposes okay in this case the job of ed is to take control of that property also okay key definition so attachment is very important Prohibition of transfer, conversion, disposition of, of or movement of property by an appropriate legal order. So, attachment is very important in enforcement directorate or in the money laundering process. So, suppose 
if you have a, someone a politician or a bureaucrat or a big business house they have done money laundering of 100 crore rupees okay so now that 100 crore rupees is white money and now they have bought a property okay or maybe hotel so what ed will do first they will take control of that hotel because that money belongs to the government that money belongs to the people okay so the attachment is very important that now that property cannot be transferred by that particular person okay without the court orders proceeds of crime any property derived or obtained directly or indirectly by any person as a result of criminal activity relating to a scheduled offence okay so if you if you means like that that person if that person makes profit converts black into white and then buys any property or any benefit so that is the proceeds of crime and that is the subject matter of pmla money laundering whosoever directly or indirectly attempts to indulge or assist other person or actually involved in any activity connected with the proceeds of crime and project projecting it as a untended property so prevention of money laundering act not only applies to the people who are doing it like you know the money belongs to them even it applies to those people who are helping them so sometimes banks financial institutions they are also helping them to do money laundering so they will also come under the preview of money laundering law payment system a system that enables payment to be effected between a payer and the beneficiary involving clearing payment or settlement service or all of them it includes the system enabling credit card debit card smart card money transfer or similar operations so if someone is running such type of payment system most of the time it's a banks even some financial institutions some investment firms uh, financial firms they are also involved in this payment system so any type of financial transaction by any means okay that will come under the prevention of money laundering law what is the punishment of money laundering law the act prescribed that any person found guilty of money laundering shall be punishable with rigorous imprisonment for 3 years to 7 years and where the proceeds of crime involved relate to any offense under paragraph 2 of part a of the schedule offenses under the narcotic drugs and uh, substance at 1985 the maximum punishment may extend to 10 years instead of 7 years so if someone is using that money to buy some drugs or do some drug business then this punishment may go up to 10 years in normal situation it will go up to 7 years and power powers of attachment of tenanted property the director or office bearer the rank of deputy director with the authority of the director can provisionally attach property believed to be the proceeds of crime for 180 days such an order is required to be confirmed by an independent adjudicating authority so for for 6 months they can attach that property okay and if they want to extend that uh, attachment they can further do it with the prior approval so let's see because see it's i think you have understood very clearly that people make black money they want to uh, convert that black money into white money and in the financial system in you know there are a lot of tax havens in the world you know that uh, uh, like mauritius mauritius route i believe you heard about it there are so many countries their main business is basically just to turn black money into white money and that they take some uh, cut maybe 5% 10% and that is their revenue and then that money will be considered as a white money and through the fdi route foreign direct investment route that money will come to india as a legitimate money okay but in this process the government of india loses the tax revenue okay that that guy got the money but then it's a illegal money eventually so the job of enforcement directorate is very very important in 1956 enforcement directorate was established it is an agency which enforces law related to the economy and fights with the problems related to economic crimes in india so you need to understand there are different crimes in the india some cyber crime uh, personal crime so we in this course we are dealing with the economic crimes okay if someone is making crime through the economics through the money and that crime is connected with the money then the ed will act 
it is also an economic intelligence agency which work for the enforcement of the provision of the two main laws of the economic development of the country two main laws are for foreign exchange management act 1999 and prevention of money laundering act pmla so foreign exchange management act is basically if someone is sending money outside of india or foreign money is coming to india it must be routed through the rbi and then this foreign exchange management act will apply so that the government or the rbi can observe that who is sending money what is the purpose of that money who is receiving that money in india what is the objective of receiving that money how that money is being used because sometime that money can be used for anti national activities like the terrorism drugs and many other crimes so they have to monitor that how the money is moving and moving in and out in india headquarter and other offices the agency is a part of the revenue department financial ministry its headquarter is situated in delhi which is headed by director of enforcement then they have five regional offices that's a mumbai chennai kolkata chandigarh and delhi these officers are headed by special director of enforcement its zonal offices then they have zonal offices also regional offices then they have zonal offices are in ahmedabad bengaluru chandigarh delhi lucknow mumbai patna shrinagar panji guwahati hyderabad kochi chennai jaipur jalandhar and kolkata these offices are headed by joint director so you need to understand that the ed is almost present in most of the part of india okay if you see the zonal then you can see easily 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 in 16 cities they have their zonal offices so you can see more or less they are covering all parts of india okay and then they are headed by senior officers like the joint director recruitment of the officers how those officers are being recruited in the ed it is directly and by drawing officers from other investigation agencies so it comprises officers of indian revenue services ips indian police services and indian administrative services such as income tax officers excise officers custom officers and police so it is ed doesn't have its like you know big permanent staff mainly they are taking officers on deputation from different departments like the irs ias ips at the senior level like the deputy director joint directors and above but at the junior level they take people like the custom inspector income tax inspector so it's more like an a national agency which is taking people from different departments history so how it started its history can be traced from 1957 when on the 1st may of 1956 a unit enforcement unit was formed in the economic affairs department it was formed for the control of the same issue relating to the violation of provisions of fera foreign exchange regulation act 1947 so the main objective in 1956 that to control the foreign exchange as i said uh, money coming in india or money going outside of india the job of ed was just to regulate that thing the enforcement unit was renamed as enforcement directorate in 1957 and the administrative control was transferred to revenue department from economic departments in 1960 later the fera uh, was act was replaced and after 1997 a new act was passed under name fema foreign exchange management act 1999 which came into effect from 1st june of 2000 so, okay so initially before the prevention of money laundering the ed was just taking care of the fera and fema violations okay like money is coming and out going outside of india they were just controlling that thing further the prevention of money laundering act 2002 was passed by the parliament to prevent and control money laundering in india and to deal with such, such issues so from 2002 ed has become more and more active and prominent in the newspaper and in the public domain because now they are dealing with money laundering law because as you can see money laundering laws uh, preview is quite vast it's not only that they are controlling and they are observing the flow of money even they are examine that whether the money which is coming outside of india is legitimate or not or someone is sending money outside uh, from india to outside whether that money is legal or not you know so even they are checking money is white or black 
and once they realize that this money is black from the origin and now it has converted into white and then even they can take action. So, now their job is much larger than just observing the in and outflow of the capital or the money in India. Later the responsibility of the ED uh, enforcement of provision of both acts was given to the enforcement directorate on 1st July 2005 and since today it is working on the enforcement of the provision of the both, both acts. So, you can understand both laws are connected. One law is dealing with money going outside of India, money, money coming in India. So, you know that should be properly regulated, you know people should not do it without the approval of the RBI. Okay. So, that is just like the flow of money okay. with the prior approval that is fine, but now because of pre prevention of money laundering act, they can also go and check you know the objective of that money, the origin of that money, the nature of that money and if they find something wrong, they can attach the property or the any uh, benefits that money has created for the real owner. Characteristics of enforcement directorate, it is an investigating agency which investigate case related to finance. It is part of revenue department of finance ministry, it mainly deals with the two law like as I said it works, it has its own court for trial and also its own affiliate tribunal. So, they have their own system of courts and affiliates, it investigates and files suits in court against those who violate the rules of FEMA and PMLA. It resolves the matters or issues by the adjudication as and provision for appeal in both acts. Okay. So, ED has its own mechanism just like the CBI like if you go to any court you will find there are special CBI courts okay. and those courts are dealing with only CBI issues like the anti-corruption issues. Okay. So, in the same way e, uh, now in India in most of the states they have ED courts also. So, in those courts only matter relating to ED are being heard by the judiciary. So, they have their own individual system which is regulating ED. Way of working, how it works, uh, modus operandi, work with upgraded systems and methods to improve work performance and remove outdated systems and methods. The team working for better communication with each other, the process of learning from global best practice to sharpen their investigation skills. So, that is very important because as you can understand that all international and major countries they are also having a preven prevention of money laundering law because money laundering is, is not a, a national issue, it is a global issue because money is moving from one place to another place. So, all these uh, countries they have ED type of agencies in their country and ED coordinates with all international agencies at the global level and national agencies with the other countries. So, it is very much you know learning from each other that how things are happening which country is doing what, uh, which are the jurisdictions or which are the countries in the globe right now who is promoting money laundering. Because as I told you earlier, there are few countries in the Caribbean islands, I think recently we heard about the Panama papers, I, I, I hope you know about the Panama papers. So, in some countries their main business or their main revenue is money laundering. Okay. They are very small countries maybe like people of 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh. So, they do not earn much money, but they have created lot of banks in their uh, in their country. Like for example, there is a possibility that in a Caribbean islands, you know there is a small country, uh, island country maybe having only 5 lakh people, but they, they might have 200, 300, 400 banks. And to establish a bank is not a very big issue in those countries, people can start a bank very quickly. So, through those methods people can move their money and launder their money. So, ED works with all international agencies to check how things are taking shape at the global level. It delegates task and strictly follow rules to deal with issues to get excellence in its working. Okay. Deals with all laws to which they are responsible and try to achieve the better results. Fair and reasonable investigations in all cases while investigating. Okay. It collects the facts and reveals the truth without any fear. So, ED is very, very independent organization just like CBI. So, I think maybe now we are hearing more about ED, but in the past ED has done so many big things and because of its autonomy and uh, uh, freedom from the government side, it, 
it really takes very strict action against those people who are violating FEMA and PMLA. Takes right decision without favoring anyone and decisions are fair without any bias, does not allow the abuse of power. So, within the ED, if someone is abusing its power, then people can complain within the ED that some officer is abusing their power. The team is responsible for the consequences of their actions and answerable for an outcome. So, ED is a very, very professional organization. So, if any officer is taking a decision, that officer and his team are responsible for the outcomes. Okay? And as I told you that they are even uh, going to the court, so their actions, their investigations, their reports are subject matter of judicial scrutiny. Okay? How to report matter to enforcement director? That is very important. Suppose if you come to know in your company or in society that someone is uh, doing money laundering. Okay? Now, I, I, I hope that you understand the money laundering process very quickly that formally and informally when people tries to uh, convert their black money into white money by any means. Okay? Like for example, suppose if I have made 5 lakh rupees as a corruption. So, now what to do with that money? So, I give one of my friend he, who is a businessman, I tell him, okay, please use this money in your uh, thing and then I will create a company and then you transfer that money into my company. Okay? So, they will do some bogus transaction and then money will come to my company. So, in this manner, I am trying to convert my black money into white money through some financial transactions. So, if you come across to any place or any person or any organization who is trying to do money laundering, you can approach to enforcement directorate. A person cannot directly approach enforcement directorate, but complaints relating to intelligence in foreign exchange and money laundering may be sent to the enforcement directorate at the following address. So, this is the address of ED, directorate enforcement, 6th floor, Lok Naik Bhavan, Khan Market, New Delhi. So, this is the address of and then if you want, you can send your complaint to their uh, email ID and you can visit the website. An application can also be filed with the court to the refer the matter to the enforcement directorate and to investigate the matter by enforcement director agency. So, there are two ways. First, I, you can directly cannot approach to the ED because see obviously, they cannot deal with each and every one. So, you can send your application and documents and your complaint to the enforcement directorate office by email or by letter. But if you believe that they are not taking any action or you believe that there is something very serious, even you can approach to courts also. Okay? You can approach to high court, you can approach to sometime district court also, you can file a complaint against the court and court can give direction to the enforcement directorate to do proper investigation. Okay? So, it is not like that if you have something very serious with you, the ED will not act. ED will act either by their own or by the direction of the court. Complain to other agencies. If someone wants to report a matter relating to uh, violation of FEMA or PLA, he has to register a complaint with any other agency or police than ED. PMLA contains 150 sections regarding to offense related to the money laundering. These offenses are called scheduled or predicted offenses. If such registered offense is one of the scheduled or pre predicted offenses, then ED can take action against such person. So, you need to see whether that particular action or the activity of person falls under the crime defined under uh, these 150 sections or not. Officers can investigate, search and uh, confiscate the property of such person. Does enforcement director take action suo moto or on a complaint? ED cannot take action on a suo moto. Suo moto means that by its own. Like ED cannot start its own investigation. Okay? Someone has to complain to the ED. Okay? One has to complain to any other agency or police first and then ED will investigate the matter and will identify the accused. Sometimes it happens that people are not directly to the ED, they just go to the nearest police station and then police station, the concerned police uh, officer uh, transfers that matter to ED that this matter falls under your jurisdiction. Okay? Agency will investigate the matter and may attest the property of an accused person and also make an arrest 
and start proceeding within the violation of the provision of FEMA and PMLA Act. So, if agency first they will investigate, they cannot arrest people like that just like CBI, first they need to uh, investigate and if they find that there is something seriously wrong and they want to take more evidences from that person or from that company, even they can arrest that person. Okay? And after arrest obviously, they have to the court room, they need to take uh, approval from the court whether they can take keep that person for more than 24 hours or not for the investigations and after getting the court's order they can continue their investigation. The matter will be resolved by the way of adjudication by courts or PMLA courts. Jurisdiction. Both uh, FEMA and PMLA applies to the whole India including Jammu and Kashmir. So, there is nothing exempted under the uh, PMLA or the FEMA. So, the ED can take action against person on which the act applies. Courts under FEMA may lie in civil courts while a PMLA case will lie in criminal courts. So, first you need to understand the offenses under the FEMA, they are civil in nature. Okay? Sometimes they may be clubbed with the PMLA and then it can be criminal, but most of the time FEMA violations are civil in nature. Like for example, suppose if you are receiving some money from outside of India, so you need to uh, give a form or you need to do some compliance before the RBI. If you fail to do that compliance, the uh, ED can start investigation against you, but that case is a civil in nature because it is not a criminal offense until and unless you are not doing money laundering. Like for example, if your friend is sending money outside from India like limited money suppose it is not like, it's not like the 100 euro 200 dollar you have to go to the RBI, but if money is coming from the RBI route and uh, having some more value then you need to do some compliance okay? and if you fail to do that compliance the matter can go to the civil court. However, all the offenses under the prevention of money laundering act they are in criminal in nature. Okay? So, the matter will go to the criminal court. The agency has jurisdiction over a person or any other legal entity who commits a crime whether he is a politician or a, a businessman. So, first you need to understand any other legal entity means even the companies, NGOs or non-legal person you know anyone who is involved in this crime does not matter how big they are like the big politicians or big businesses ED can take action against them. All the public servants come under the jurisdiction of the agency if they are involved in any offense related to the money laundering. So, all uh, government officials, it is not only the companies, even uh, the government officials, if they do something relating to money laundering, they also fall under the PMLA. Procedure followed by enforcement directorate for investigation. So, once they receive the complaint or they get a direction from the court, how they start their procedure? So, first search of place and person. After the registration of the complaint to an agency or police for schedules or predict crime under the PMLA, first of all they have to report magistrate under section 156 of the code of criminal procedure code. So, they cannot take action directly, first they have to report to the uh, nearest uh, magistrate or the ED magistrate, ED judge that they want to start the investigation. After the approval of the magistrate, the officers may search any public uh, place, building, vehicle or and vessel of breakdown, any local, safe or almira or any other uh, place exercising its power. So, it is like that they cannot act by their own because when they are entering into someone's house for search and seizure, they need approval of the court. Okay? So, if ED is acting without the court order that is the illegal thing. Okay? They need to go to the magistrate, take the order from the magistrate that we want to go to that company or that person's house, we want to do the search and seizure, they can do it, but only with the approval of the magistrate. They are empowered to search a person if they have reason to believe that he may be involved in any crime. Okay? Then after this uh, search, okay, the second step is seize the property. Okay? Officers can seize any property if they have reason to believe that such property has any relation to the money laundering. So, they have reason to believe, it is not like that they must prove that moment. If they believe that this particular house or the company or anything 
and this person has bought through the money laundering money, okay, they can seize that property, they can seize that object, even they can seize the company's accounts also. Okay. So, if they, they must have a reason to believe. So, students you need to understand when I say reason to believe that does not mean that they have to prove at that moment that matter will go to the court and in the courtroom both parties will fight with each other like the ED and that person and finally court will decide whether uh, this money uh, laundering happened or not if yes whether that property was created through the this black money or not. Okay. But at that moment first they can seize the property and why they seize the property so that the person cannot transfer it. Okay. Because if they do not seize the property, then the person can sell that property to some innocent person and then if then the ED goes and sees the property that innocent person will suffer. So, once they know that this property is being created by the black money, they can go and uh, seize it. Officers will follow the code of criminal process in 1973 while confiscating or attaching any property. So, they will follow the proper procedure, it, it, it cannot be a arbitrary thing that they just go and you know see someone's my property or no they have to follow proper procedure under the crpc section 17 and 18 of pmla has provision for the search and seizure of any person or property section 19 of the pmla empowers the officers to arrest a person if they have reason to believe that such person is involved in a crime related to money laundering. So, if they believe that someone is involved in money laundering, if they just believe, you know, again I am telling you they do not need to prove at that moment. You cannot say that, okay, you do not have any evidence. Even without having any evidence, if they believe that you have done some money laundering, they can arrest you. But as I told you, that under the Indian constitution, they cannot keep any person more than for 24 hours. After within the 24 hours, that person must be presented before the nearest magistrate or the ED court and then the magistrate or the court will decide whether that person will go for the bail like he, he can be he can go home with the bail or he will go to the uh, jail like the judicial custody or he can go to the PC police custody. Okay. The police custody means that now the ED can keep that person for 14 days for the investigation and for the interrogation. Okay. So, this is the uh, CRPC provision for all types of arrest and interrogation. So, ED will also follow the same procedure. The main functions of uh, directorate, investigation uh, contravention of the provision of FEMA. So, first we talk about FEMA. Contravention of FEMA deals with by any way of adjudication by designated authorities of ED and penalties up to three times the sum involved can be imposed. As I told you, it is a civil offense. So, they you like the person who is violating the FEMA provisions cannot go to the jail. Okay. The maximum that he can be liable to pay penalties up to three times the sum, sum involved. So, suppose like if you have bought uh, suppose like 100,000 dollar like 1 lakh dollar from abroad but you are not able to justify that uh, why you are getting this money, who is sending you this money or you are not complying with the RBI rules and regulations, RBI compliances, then up to 3 lakh dollar penalty can be imposed on you. Investigate offenses of money laundering under the provision of PMLA and to take action to at attachment and configuration of the property if the same is determined to be proceeds of the crime deprived from this uh, scheduled offense under PMLA and to prosecute the person involved in the offense of. Okay. Adjudicate show cause notices issued under the repealed foreign exchange uh, see the, the this law is already repealed. Pursue prosecution under FERA in the concerned court. So, if any old notice has been issued by the uh, FERA authority then they can issue further and new notices. Processing cases, cases of fugitive from India under Fugitive if, uh, Economic Offenders Act 2008. So, this is the new law which ED is right now doing not very aggressively, but whosoever leaves India and like the Vijay Malya and uh, other Modi, you know, Nero Modi. 
So those type of people who have left India and they have cheated and frauded the Indian banks, financial institutions and now they are the outside of India. So ED is working to bring those people in India also and ED is uh, taking control of their property in India. Okay. The objective of this act is to provide for measure to deter fugitive economic offenders from evading the process of law in India by staying outside the jurisdiction of Indian courts and to preserve the sanity of the rule of law in India. Okay. Sponsor cases of prevention, detention of conversion of foreign exchange and preventing of smuggling activities act in regard to contravention of FEMA. So, see within the FEMA there are different rules, regulations, they are also taking care of this thing also. Render cooperation of foreign countries in matters relating to money laundering and restitution of assets under the provision of PMLA and to seek cooperation in such matter. So, all these international money laundering agencies they work together. So, like suppose one day if India needs some help like the ED needs some help in UK. So, they will contact the local uh, money laundering agency in UK and they will tell ok we have identified that a, a person has bought a house in London ok by using the uh, money laundering money in India ok through some other banks or through, through some other companies so, at that if that agency is satisfied with the evidences given by the ED then only that agency can uh, attest that property. Okay, so, now you can understand in a simple way that suppose if a French person has uh, bought something in India by using the black money. So, the French investigation agency like the enforcement directorate or the French courts they do not have any legal power in India. So, they have to contact the Indian courts and Indian agencies. The Indian agency will investigate the matter then Indian agency will go to the court and they say that on behalf of the French uh, money laundering agency, uh, anti money laundering agency, we request you to attest this property. Okay. So, this is how it works. So, ED works with the all foreign countries for the cooperation. Investigation powers of uh, uh, enforcement director officers section 36 and 37 of FEMA deals with the establishment of this agency and empowers its officers to investigate the matter which contravenes the provision of this act and any other rule or order passed by the authority by exercising the power given under this act. Power to investigate, who can start the investigate in the ED? The officer below the rank of assistant director are not allowed to investigate the matter and all upper rank officers are allowed to investigate including director of enforcement. So, a officer see in the ED there are so many people. So, we cannot allow that a junior person can start the investigation. So, only a officer with the rank of assistant director. So, when I say assistant director is equivalent to SP in district. Okay, he is a very senior officer and only up to that level we can allow officers to start. So, assistant director, deputy director, joint director, uh, special director and director all these senior people can start the investigation. Investigation any place or uh, person and an officer of ED is empowered to investigate any place, building, vehicle or any area to find evidence for the further proceeding. He can break down any locker or almira to find evidence and take, a, take an oath of any person. So, it is just empowered like the CBI, income tax authorities, custom authorities to collect evidences. Okay. It is not like a purely intelligence agencies where they do not have power to act. Here they have lot of power to act and collect the relevant evidences. Power to arrest a person also. After investigation or any time of investigation, if they found a person is guilty, they can arrest him also. What actions are taken on the report prepared by the enforcement directorate officer? So, once they complete their investigation, what actions are taken? After the investigation of the matter, officers make a report uh, of the matter which includes the detail of the report, investigation done by the officers places and persons investigated, attachment report of the attached property, 
report of an arrested person. So, in, in, in their report, they include all these elements. After the preparation of the report, matter may be adjudicated in the ED's own adjudicating authority or the case may be referred to the CBI court or FX courts also. So, sometimes they believe that in this matter, the corruption is involved, they can transfer that matter to CBI also. The aggrieved party of the case may go to the higher court for the appeal. If someone is not happy with the ED's uh, investigation report, that report can be challenged in the court also. The agency has its own appellate tribunal for the purpose of take an appeal. The court on the decision of the matter may impose fine twice of the sum involved in the case of contravention of the FEMA and may punish with a rigorous punishment. So, let us do some case studies that is few cases where we can see that how things took place in last uh, few years. So, like the simple cases. So, Jagdish Bola drug racket case, a formal DSP of Punjab was arrested by the Punjab police while raided at his house. Fatehgar police found drug of 100 crore rupees at his residence in the Mohali. So, a deputy director of ED filed a case against him with many other politicians and NRI who supported him in this racket. And Niranjan has to face so many problems including his transfer from the Jalandhar to Kolkata which was cancelled by the Punjab and Haryana court. So, you can see that in such a big matter where the 100 crore rupees of drug was uh, found in a you know at a home of a police officer, former police officer and lot of big politicians and bureaucrats they were involved in that racket you know because they were taking money from that drug and sending that money outside of India or buying something in India. So, that a honest officer called Niranjan, he took action against them. No doubt in the government system, sometime it happens that honest officers are being suffered, but his transfer was cancelled by Punjab and Haryana High Court. Vijay Malia case is a very uh, big example. As you know that Vijay Malia was a big businessman and also a politician of India as a member of parliament running many of companies including airline service and liquor business in India. Everybody knows about him. He took a loan of 9000 crore from many banks and did not return. Okay. Later he leaves India and he, he has declared the defaulter and now Indian government is demanding him back from London court okay, or the government. So, we are, we are demanding the UK government and the London courts that he must be sent to India. Enforcement Directorate has also filed a case against Vijay Malia charging him with money laundering under PMLA. ED registered a case on the basis of CBI probe which alleged him and A. a Raghunathan CFO of the Kingfisher Airlines with a default of 900 crore rupees with IDBI bank officials. Okay. So, while he took this money, he sent that money outside of India. So, that was a case of money laundering. So, ED intervened and not only uh, other agencies like the CBI and, and, and many polices, ED is also taking action against Vijay Malia. Conclusion Directorate Enforcement is a department of our government which is working to develop our nation. So, the main objective of ED is to help our country that how to develop our country because as you need to understand see in this lecture I did not go too much the details of the uh, law or the you know the provisions of PMLA because that, that is not the objective. As I told you in my first lecture, the objective of these lect lectures are not to make you legal expert that is not the purpose that is not the objective. The objective here that how you can understand that all these economic laws you know can help our country to grow. When I say country to grow means you to grow, your company to grow. Because if our companies, our citizens are following rules and regulations in nice manner, in decent manner, then only our country can grow. So, if you once you know that this is something illegal, like you know, I have given other lectures also, where you came to know that few business activities are not allowed or they are illegal in, in our country. So, if you do not know, like suppose you are a business student, so obviously you do not know whether this activity is legal or illegal. So, you are in a bank, you are in a financial institution and you come across to a transaction which says very clearly that this money is not clean. 
okay and someone is trying to use your bank or financial institutions maybe with the consent of your senior officials because you know all these transactions give lot of money to banks and financial institutions but as a responsible citizen of this country you should report to the enforcement directorate okay you should tell the enforcement directorate that i am observing some transactions in my bank or in my financial institutions or my investment banks that someone is trying to do money laundering okay because you need to understand that the money laundering is a process which helps the corruption what will you do with the corrupted money if you can't do money laundering first you need to understand you know because you are all uh, responsible citizen so people do corruption to make money okay but what will what will they do with that money if they can't use it you know you can't i uh, keep that money in your home you know and doing nothing and obviously now there are a lot of income tax authorities rules regulations that you cannot use more than 50000 rupees at a time in a bank you have to give your uh, pan card and if you are spending lot of cash here and there you are buying so many things then automatically you come under the radar of income tax authorities okay so you want to avoid that thing okay so you want to keep that money black money dirty money like say so money laundering comes from that concept that it's a dirty money okay and laundering is like you know uh, basically cleaning your cloth okay like when you go and clean your cloth that is called laundering okay that that word comes from laundry okay so when you want to clean your money because that money is dirty it's a black money it's a it's a corrupt money or maybe money you have created by some illegal activities like suppose you are selling drugs what what will you do with that money because you have to use that money maybe you are in uh, sex rackets uh, trafficking human trafficking you know people are making lot of money through the human trafficking by the drugs by the sex trafficking by corruption so all those illegal ways are creating lot of cash you know because those guys are not dealing in the banks you know online transactions are not happening when i say 20 crore rupees they are all working through the cash so that money is very very dirty okay but that money belongs to the country that money belongs to the government okay or the, the people so once they start uh, do laundering of that money you know cleaning that money then they start doing all these things you know so you should know that if someone is trying to do money laundering in your bank or in your financial institutions you must immediately inform the enforcement directorate and as i told you earlier that how can you approach them either you can just write a letter to their agency the addresses are given if you if you do google search you will find those addresses you can email also even you can claim your confidentiality that if you don't if you don't want to disclose your name the ed will not disclose your name okay so ed just want information from you and if you believe that ed is not doing something like for example in in a rare case if you believe that you are complaining against a very big bank or a big politician or a big, very big bureaucrat very powerful person and some corrupt officer normally it's not there but suppose rarely occasionally if a corrupt officer is not taking the step so then in that situation you can go to the court also and you can submit your documents to the court and court can give direction to the enforcement directorate to do investigation okay so as a responsible citizen you can play your role as we have discussed its structure and working its functions and power now we can say that it is working with some specific objects you know this is very 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 focused organization Uh, students you need to understand in our country uh, there are some organizations which are doing so many things like the C, uh, in our one lecture we discuss about the cbi cbi is not only dealing with economic offenses but they are dealing with heinous crimes also sometime in the uh, rape murder some very heinous offenses cbi is doing investigation in the uh, anti corruption issues bribery issue they are doing corruption and they are investigating so uh, some agencies are very doing you know very uh, very very comprehensive job but ed is very much focused ed is doing nothing but is just dealing with few aspects one is the uh, fema that when money is coming and are going outside of india second it's money laundering 
that if someone is trying to clean its money by any means and third is the people who have left our country you know by doing all this fraud and cheating with the government of India or banks or individuals they are acting against them. So, it is a very very focused and specified object organization. This is a government supporting agency to control money laundering in India. It is working with good and clear vision to serve the nation. Many officers from different government departments who support this agency. The investigation and resolve the matter with the process of adjudication and also perform many other functions by using their own power given to them by an agency. So, this agency is not absolutely free, th th their jobs, their, uh, their investigations, their issues are under the preview of the adjudication. So, within the ED, in the government, there is an adjudicating body. So, their uh, ED's behavior, their investigations, their decisions are being judged by that adjudicating authority in the government. And finally, the judiciary is scrutinized the all efforts of ED because ultimately ED has to prove its case before the judiciary. So, it is not like the IB or RAW which is very secretive organizations whatever they are doing uh, for the country they do not need to explain to anyone like the courtroom or you know the media here the ED is very very open organization. Okay? So, they have to explain to the uh, courts that what they are doing how they are doing. It is functioning to strengthen our economy. Okay? It punishes fraud persons involving in money laundering and those who contravene the uh, provisions of FEMA and PMLA. It works for controlling and preventing money laundering and as a guardian of two important laws or acts will make India better and develop our country. So, it is very much focused at what they are doing, how they are doing and uh, nowadays we are hearing lot of news from ED because see now the government or the, our ecosystem is very much aware of the situation that people see earlier people were doing corruption, they were doing money laundering, but nobody was checking them. But now the government last 10, 15 years the ED has taken a new step and they are checking the money laundering process very carefully. And the other reason is that now India is a global economy, our lot of financial transactions are happening outside of India, lot of FDI is coming to India, foreign direct investment before 20 years, maybe the FDI was not the main source of the Indian economy, but now FDI is also happening. So, we need an agency who can check whether the incoming capital in country incoming you know uh, in terms of FDI foreign direct investment when the f f uh, investment is coming outside of India to India whether that money belongs to India in terms of the money laundering or that money really is an investment. So, there are two aspects one suppose a, con a company is investing from Mauritius or Singapore or Hong Kong. Okay. In, uh, in our country that is good for our country okay like suppose 1000 crore rupees is coming to india for some investment that's a good money however what if that money belongs to already you know to our indian counterparts and through the money laundering process now they are bringing that money back to india so in that scenario the government has to be very careful and take some action so that people don't do such type of activities okay so, we were talking about the seriousness of money laundering process. So, few reports recently indicated that from India every year people are doing money laundering in terms of 15 lakh crore rupees. So, that is a huge amount, that is a very very huge amount and how they are doing it first you know because it is a very simple thing if you observe little bit minutely in your day to day life or in your professional life you will understand very clearly. So, first they collect some cash, then they have some agents you know, so they, they gave they, they give money to those agents in a small amounts, they set up their small businesses and they like to show more and more income in the cash. Okay? So, that money is generating suppose like if you give money to a business like and that business is generating really only 1 crore rupees per year. But because of your illegal cash that uh, the company is showing that business is showing that we are generating 5 crore uh, cash okay? and then obviously they are showing lot of losses also so do not need to pay taxes. 
but then that money goes to a bank or outside of india there are so many banks as you know that in like the switzerland they don't they don't disclose any details about the people who are depositing that type of money so then the money goes to the switzerland or some other banks in, in uh, outside of india then in those banks they created some shell companies in abroad they created some fake companies the they call it shell companies those companies are only on paper they don't do any business and through those companies they start doing some transactions so then money is moving from one shell company to another shell company and through this means they give a legitimate legitimate uh, projection legitimate uh, shape to that black money and finally through those companies they transfer that money to indian market so obviously some some money is coming back to india it's not like that all money lying in abroad but then whatever money is coming to india that becomes absolutely clean and white okay so in that scenario that money belongs to india but then the government of india because it's an fdi or uh, so they, we have lot of liability against that money okay and by using if we allow this type of transactions then these corrupt people they will have more and more power because now they have got the white money and they can do more corruption so i think this is very clear that money laundering is a very serious issue and uh, still i think uh, i'm not sure how many indians are aware of the process of money laundering the impact of money laundering on country because we always believe that corruption is bad but we really we really need to know that what happens after corruption you know what what people do with the corrupt money once we know that the that money can be used by the government for the social welfare then i believe that our country can grow very faster and there are few issues in the ed also that there are very few permanent officers posted in enforcement directorate their almost 80 to 90% staff is coming from different departments so there are few arguments that maybe they don't have expertise you know if they are they are permanent staff they are more trained they have institutional memory but these cases are there however if we observe the functioning of enforcement directorate in last 10 15 years we can easily say that the prevention of money laundering law is taking shape in our country right now and as a citizen of this country if we can help enforcement directorate to identify those type of transactions because <clears throat> once you tell the enforcement directorate then your job is over they don't come and ask you why and how because then they will do their investigations with the approval of the court they can go and search the premises they they can arrest the people they can attest the property they can file criminal cases against those people so your name will not be there it will be confidential however you can contribute a lot in the country's economic growth thank you